What is the latest with the Pac-12? Are we almost to a boiling point? Now, we got a lot to discuss here. It's been a bit since I recorded a podcast. There's been a lot happening in the world of the Pac-12. Washington State made some news. Nebraska's president talked about dominoes falling and realignment. We got more information about the potential TV deal. A little insight into Oregon and Washington's plans. You know, more stuff about Klyovkov and the mess that, you know, Larry Scott left, etc. Let's, let's start here. Okay, earlier this week, Washington State President Kirk Schultz released a statement about Cougars' athletics financial issues and the challenges that they're facing in balancing the athletics budget. Now, the decrease in revenue distribution for Pac-12 universities due to overpayments from a conference media partner, Comcast, of course, I've brought up multiple times, uh, that's a significant factor. And, of course, (laughs) the relocation of the Pac-12 headquarters out of San Francisco, uh, that also uh, exceeded budget projections. Apparently... Leaving the San Francisco office went over by $10 million because of the condition that the office was left in. Larry Scott completely rearranged the office space, did a lot of customization. Uh, and that, in, I mean, he, that included like a Pac-12 logo etched in glass outside his office, other things throughout the office space. Basically, according to the lease agreement, they had to leave the space in the same condition in which they rented it. But Scott Sponge had done so much, uh, what's the word I just said, uh, customization to it that, you know, it cost a fortune to get it back to standard. So that thing went over budget. Uh, but back to Washington State, this this was not all because of, you know, Pac-12 miscues. Inadequate documentation of revenues and expenses in Cougar Athletics, that contributed to exceeding expenditures. And immediate actions are going to be implemented for them, including, you know, a, a freeze on vacant positions, or at least a temporary freeze, uh, a pause on non-essential travel, purchases, new professional development, all, all these things. The president did state that these fiscal measures will only impact athletics. It's not going to affect upcoming salary increases uh, increases for WSU faculty and staff. But here's the thing. Canzano and Wilner, of course, the most connected Pac-12 media guys, both stated that these overpayments from Comcast, the ones that I've been talking about for a while, those should be paid back out of the school's endowments instead of the athletic departments because the president's are the ones who allowed Champagne Larry to go crazy with the conference money. It, now, it doesn't appear that anything like that is going to happen, but regardless, Washington State has said they're going to be transparent with how they handle the financial issues going forward, but it's going to be a tough road to hoe. And, and it does give us a bit of an idea of what's coming with any potential television contract, because if they thought they'd be getting a deal that's better than the Big 12s, as several Pac-12 sources have hinted at, then this would not be such a dire situation, right? Now, let's move on to the Cornhuskers. Of course, Ted Carter, Nebraska president, he was interviewed by Tom Chattel. I hope I say that right. Uh, Tom, if you're listening, my apologies if I said that wrong. Uh, But he's of the Omaha World Herald. And the president predicted big changes and realignment coming soon in college football. He mentioned that discussions are, uh, they're happening, at least around realignment and whatnot. And there are many, you know, talks and behind the scenes actions that are taking place while also he believes significant changes may take like a year or two to happen. This all makes sense, right? Uh, Carter said, how big should the Big Ten be? Uh, Do we need four more Pac-12 teams? I think we have another year or two of the status quo with few minor changes, but I think over the next year there's going to be a lot of big changes that are going to happen. Two teams that move from one of the Power Five conferences that cause things to unravel. There's a domino effect. One team leaves the ACC, it has a domino effect. Same with teams leaving the Pac-12. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you, I have heard more about the possibility of a super division, you know, 48 team super division between the SEC having 24 and uh, uh, the Big Ten having 24. I've heard more in the past couple of weeks about that than I think I ever have before. Like the potential for ACC teams to leave and join either the Big Ten and the SEC, again, both having 24 teams, while the rest of college football just gets left behind or you know, some of the remaining teams from those two conferences joining with the Big 12, it gives us a P2, a little one, and a G whatever. I mean, who knows at this point? But who who knows what this is going to look like going forward? But to hear another sitting president in the Big 10 acknowledge that expansion is, for all intents and purposes, inevitable, that really caught my ear this week. Uh, now let's move on to the Pac-12 media rights negotiations latest. And don't you know that the New York Post's Andrew Marchand always has something that he's hearing. Uh, Marchand points out, as he has done before, 
that ESPN seems to be out of the picture at the moment. We've heard it many times, of course. I believe the quote was, there have been no substantive talks between ESPN and the Pac-12. Now, ESPN passed on deals with the Big Ten, NFL Sunday Ticket, the Premier League, Champions League, and the MLS, so they're sticking by what CEO Bob Iger talked about on their recent revenue call about making smarter decisions with must-have programming, and the Pac-12 does not appear to fall into that category. Now, another interesting thing brought up this week regarding ESPN is the company's potential move to DTC, uh, that's direct-to-consumer. Eventually, ESPN is going to be just a streaming app. Now, I believe we brought up on the show a few months ago about how ESPN wants to be the sports Netflix, basically a one-stop shop that allows you to access basically every single sporting event that's going on, hosting the streams inside their own app, even from other streamers like Paramount, YouTube TV, etc. You would still have to pay for the other streaming services. You could just access it through ESPN. Pretty smart, in my opinion. Maybe ESPN gets a portion of that. Who knows? Outside of that, the other interesting news from Marshan was that NBC, Amazon, and Fox Sports are also out of the running for the primary rights holders uh, of the Pac-12 media rights package. Now, NBC looked like the potential bidder here, you know, kind of putting some games on Peacock, some on NBC when Notre Dame doesn't have home games, others on USA Network. So this news is a little interesting, right? Because that was the thought. If ESPN's not in, well, NBC is going to save the day. But with Notre Dame's rights coming up, and them still working, you know, in this primetime Big Ten deal, they don't appear to be all that interested in the Pac-12 either. Washington, Oregon, Arizona, Colorado, they are going to have some important decisions to make. You know, balancing the importance of exposure versus getting a paycheck. But at the same time, there might not be enough of either to justify staying in the Pac-12. It's it's very interesting. I've heard a lot about the CW one. I will... Let's close out with this. Pete Thamel was on Pat McAfee earlier this week. He stated that Oregon and Washington have basically let it be known that they want to be in the Big Ten. Now, we do know that they met with the Big Ten a couple of years ago, last year, whatever it was, in Chicago, just to kind of go over the vetting process. That doesn't mean that they're going to get in. There's still a lot at play here. You know, the Big Ten, as we talked about, they got a lot on their hands right now. So, so they're not looking to go poaching any other conferences currently. But I found that interesting that Tamil, excuse me, Thamel just talked about it so matter-of-factly because the rumors around the idea that Oregon and Washington don't want to sign a long-term grant of rights, that, that seemed to gain a little more of a foothold with this. Now, of course, without a TV deal, there's no reason for a grant of rights, but without knowing how long each school is willing to sign for, that kind of makes it more difficult to get a TV deal. Like, maybe Amazon wanted a longer deal than the Pac-12 could offer because of these schools. Like, who who knows at this point? Right now, I have no idea what to expect out of this. I don't know that anybody does. Maybe the Pac-12 has an ace up their sleeve. But the clock is ticking. If they're wanting to expand, they likely need to do so before July 1. We've mentioned this on the show as well. Because that's when San Diego State's Mountain West buyout basically triples. It's going to be in the $40-plus million range after July 1. Right now, I think it's like $17 million, $16 million, something like that. Uh, either way, it, there's been more talk about Apple and the CW lately. I can't even begin to act like I have a clue. This has been the most insane media rights negotiation that I can ever remember in college sports. It, a lot of people were talking about the, the Colorado being close to joining the Big 12 rumors from earlier in the week. We've heard that for months at this point. If Colorado jumps ship, that may be all it takes for others to leave for greener pastures if there are greener pastures out there. The issue with this realignment mess is that everyone's on different schedules, so it's tough to nail down when anything could happen. Like members of the ACC and the Pac-12 joining together to create a different league, uh, the Pac-12 would be ready to do that now. The ACC still may be 13 years away. Like this, This stuff is so frustrating, and I cannot wrap my head around the fact that this is something that we're actually talking about. This is nuts to me that the stuff that that is the stuff that I'm talking about on this channel is so much more business related than it is sports related. It's it's a little frustrating. It's a little frustrating. I'll say that. I'll say that. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question. You can email me, Gary, at winningcureseverything.com. 
Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.